Hello, how you guys doing? I'm Gigi. You're watching The Messy Sweet Spot. I have a lawyer here and she is going over the documents. Diddy has been sued again and again and again. Well, this lawsuit, it entails a dealing with Tupac, a girl that Diddy was entertaining of some sort. And she was asking him or alleging that he has something to do with Tupac leaving this earth and he got ballistic because the truth hurts and he did some horrible stuff to this girl i mean my goodness i'm gonna allow her to tell you you guys know i like to react to all the news so make sure you guys like share and subscribe here at the messy sweet spot and let's see what this lawyer has to say about this diddy lawsuit and she's gonna tell us everything okay so listen up I just read all 62 pages of the newest Diddy lawsuit and by far this is the most disturbing thing I've ever read. This is the point where I usually tell you to grab a cocktail but this time I'm asking you to grab some tissue and definitely your earphones. Ashley Parham is the newest plaintiff to file suit against Diddy but she also is suing a few others. She's also suing Christina Coram. Here she is. Shane Pierce and three John Doe's and one Jane Doe. And for those who don't know, John Doe and Jane Doe is a fictitious name that is used when the person's real name is unknown or being concealed. What we do know about these people is that Christina is an employee of Diddy. She's also known as his right hand woman. And Shane, unfortunately, is someone that Ashley considered to be a friend. Back in February of 2018, Shane and Ashley met. He actually came to her rescue as she was getting into an altercation with another man at a bar. After the whole ordeal, a bunch of people are standing outside the bar talking and then Shane decides to FaceTime Diddy, kind of showing everyone, look who my friend is, I'm important. Ashley kind of makes a face and is completely unimpressed and I just read all 62 pages of the newest Diddy lawsuit in by the first days of her life. After she arrives, they make small talk. He tells her how he just got this new car and he wants to give her a spin. Now we know hindsight is 2020, but this is a sign. How you too weak to open medicine, but you well enough to drive? Nonetheless, they head for a little spin in his car and head back onto the house. Once back inside his apartment, she notices that he leaves the door slightly open. So she mentions it to him and he says, oh, you know, the door's been tripping. I told maintenance about it. They should be fixing it soon. About 10 minutes later, guess who comes right on in? You guessed it. Diddy. Oh, but he doesn't come alone. He's there with Christina and also his bodyguard. The bodyguard is named as John Doe number one. Also, Jane Doe is there, another woman who she does not know, but she describes her to be in her 30s with blonde hair. And John Doe number two and three are there, who's supposedly a friend of Diddy and Shane's and also Diddy's driver. According to the lawsuit, John Doe number three, the driver never came inside. He stayed in the car. Ashley states that Diddy immediately started to antagonize her about the comments she made about Tupac. He started walking towards her with the knife, held it up the first days of her life. After she arrives, they make small talk. He tells her how he but then she soon realized that it was baby oil. Then Diddy instructed Christina to insert what looked like a syringe up Ashley's badge. Then something went wrong. Whatever was a part of their plan with this syringe, Christina wasn't doing it right, so Diddy started inserting it himself. Christina and Jane Doe decide to leave, and so now Ashley is alone with Diddy, Shane, John Doe, number one and two. Next, Diddy picks up a television remote that's nearby and starts violently inserting it into Ashley. Ashley is hysterically crying and screaming and Diddy instructs Shane to flip her over on her stomach because he doesn't want to see or hear none of that. Diddy then instructed Shane to put a pillow over her head to muffle some of the screams and then Shane proceeded to all word her anally. After Shane, then Diddy, John Doe number one and John Doe number two all took turns doing the same. She also stated that before John Doe started, he doused her with more oil and then jumped on her back as if she was a slip and slide, which knocked the wind out of her because he was a large person. She also stated that while John Doe number one was doing this to her, that Diddy was sitting in a chair but then she soon realized that it was baby oil. Then Diddy instructed Wow, that was a lot. That was a lot. What do you guys take of that? Oh my goodness, do you believe it? I believe every bit of it. You know, he is the type that would take a, a remote and stick it inside you. I mean, they said that remote was huge. Something like this, and I've showed this before. Do you see how big and long this is? Well, this is the size of remote, but it was wider, okay? And can you imagine how much red stuff, you know what I mean by red, 
was pouring out of her and they were still, uh, you know, doing what they were doing because they don't care about blood. They don't care about boo-boo. You know, if they were doing it in her behind, can you imagine the shit? I mean, shit and blood rituals that is going on. They don't care. You know, they're immune to the smell or maybe they like the smell. It smell like perfume to them, blood and shit mixed together. You know, because they're high off those sugar boogers. They own that pink coquillana. And honey, this is what they do. And I feel that, you know, when Shane or the guy was trying to impress this girl and showing her, look, I know Diddy and FaceTime and Diddy, honey, he wasn't really trying to show off to the girl. That was really for Diddy. They was trying to scout. See, they pulled that trick. See why you think you looking at Diddy all amazed. Diddy really checking you out. And then he sent him a text saying, yeah, she would do bring her. But he didn't like that the girl questioned Diddy about Tupac's leaving this earth. So he said, yeah, I'm going to show her. You know, he wanted to get her, but then after she said that, he wanted to really, really, really get her, you know, and really make her pay for the comments he said because the truth hurts and I hurt his feelings. And he don't, he don't get down like that. He, you cannot just say anything to him and think you just going to be okay. He's going to make you know it. You're going to remember him for the rest of your life. And he did just that. And Shane set it up. And honey, you got to, got to be careful. Y'all cannot be going over people's houses and people's cars. You don't know. Okay. You got to have prayer and have discernment and stick to yourself. Just stay single. Stay by yourself. Sit at home and watch some TV and just shut the hell up. Because going out here partying, trying to look for this person and trying to look for that. Honey, you see what it's going to get you. It's going to get you just like these victims with Diddy. So y'all better straighten up and just sit at home and be quiet and watch some TV or go to church and pray. Okay, because that's the only place it's safe. It's not even safe at the church no more. So, honey, comment. I want to know what y'all thoughts about this. It is sad that we still have to see this and hear this. And this coming from a lawyer, and you know she knows what she's talking about, okay? So I know when I would say some stuff like that, y'all may not take me serious, but I know when a lawyer is speaking, y'all gonna hear it, you know, because you guys judge by the messenger, you know? So comment, what are your thoughts? And I will see you guys on another next upload, okay? Bye.